Round six team lists, they uh, never cease to amaze, don't they? These uh, these coaches and the changes that they make, there's a couple of big ones and we'll get to it. I haven't gone through them exactly, but I've had people message me straight away. What's with NRL.com and, and not being able to load their team list? It seems to, the only couple of times I've been able to make this video as soon as team lists are ready. It's sort of 10 past four right now and we still can't even access the NRL.com uh, your know, website. So we're on a uh, zero tackle here. So shout out to those legends that can uh, get this up at a reasonable rate. All right. Roosters up against the Newcastle Knights. Let's kick it off with the Knights there and, and nothing changes for them in their outside backs. They do have Dylan Lucas and Kaipis Paul both starting in the edge on the edge position. And, and there's a little bit of news out there that Frizzell maybe has a moderate strain hamstring injury, which might mean you get a few weeks more out of, of Lucas in that starting Jersey. And, you know, we, we know that can do, you know, we know what he can score in that jersey there for sure. Jaden Braley gets a start again with Phoenix in the 14. Do expect Braley to get those decent minutes again. And we'll have to wait, I think, a little bit longer until he becomes a purchase for us there. For the Roosters side of things, there's a bunch of changes. And we do see Michael Jennings move into the centers. So there you go. Um, Manu goes back to one with T out for this week. Jennings, obviously, we're not looking at it as an option. Junior Palga in there on the uh, on the wing as well. Joey Manu into fullback, so he's definitely a solid option heading into this week. He's been great at center. We know what he can do at fullback as well. Connor Watson moves into the six jersey, so they do see Zach Docker Clay, who will play a, a bunch of minutes there for Brandon Smith, unless there's a, a heap of injuries again, like last week. We also see Terrell May on the uh, on the bench there as well as Satili Tupanua with Nat Butcher coming back into the starting jersey there. There's a lot of uh, a lot of talk, you know, in the last few hours about Satili actually being dropped from this side, and he hasn't. So it does mean that they have another edge on their uh, on their bench there, but uh, I don't see in what world that he can steal minutes off Nat Butcher or off Angus Crichton at the moment. Angus was great um, defensively as as well as with the you know, ball in hand as well, and then Nat. We know what he can provide, and Silly has not Satili 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 has not been providing that at this stage. So that's um that's an interesting you know decision to have him on the bench there, because obviously for us looking at potentially Angus Crichton this week, that uh yeah could cook his ability to to score really well and and get those massive minutes. So yeah, that's the interesting one. And and do you still pick up Angus Crichton following that news? I I think that he's still a great buy, and I think he should be getting back closer to an eighty minute effort but um will that happen you know if you get 60 minutes is that going to be worth it for our sides you've got uh, greg marzu on the extended bench as well all right let's move it to the next one there being the storm up against the doggy so what do we see here on the dog side Stephen Crichton at one that's what he played you know a lot of that game last week with with taff going down early we, who we see? Harry Hayes. I haven't seen that name before. Uh, Jamin Salmon still in the lock jersey. We see Curran in the second row position there. Chris Patolo starting again. Max King has been named even with the fractured hand. So interesting that he, you know, he's been named and he's fine, but uh, Kurt Mann is gone. So yeah, I wonder, wonder what that is. The, the man just seems to p- play through a lot of injuries, old Maxi King. But um, Bronson Cherry keeps his spot now in the centers. Is that going to be just, you know, that extra one week or... Are they going to potentially you know, make a change and keep him there longer term? Adokar back is, is back on the, in that team as well, which is good. But uh, yeah, will Curran stick in that second row spot or will he play lock? And you know, not sure at this stage. Salmon looks like he's you know he's got that spot. He seems to be named there every week. But Salmon played on the edge last week and Curran played through the middle instead. So will that be the late change? We'll obviously find out at the 6 p.m. game on Friday. They've got Bailey Hayward. Um, Farmer Silly, Sam Hughes on the bench still with uh, with Gatoga uh, there as well. So yeah, nothing too outlandish. I think for your Canberra, uh, Canberra, Canterbury, uh, Middles, Currens, Salmons, Hughes, these type of guys. You're holding, you're playing them this week. They they need those guys. Obviously, if Max King is out, it means more minutes for Salmon, for a Hughes. Um, if he is playing, which you know, I suppose they're just giving him every opportunity to. We'll see how that goes and how that plays out. But um, yeah, if he plays, it obviously hurts them a little bit, especially Sammy Hughes, but um, Salmon there for sure. Especially if Curran, if Curran sticks at the edge, then probably, you know, Salmon's going to be fine. But if he sticks through the middle, then that's minutes taking off someone like Jamin. But uh, I think we'll be playing him anyway with how our teams have ended up, you know, setting up, that's for sure. 
Munster is still named for this week, which is good. And along with Hughes. So Hughes, people asking me about him as a buyer. I think he's a really solid one. Looks like Sean Bloor has got that position now. Whether he plays the full 80 or not is uh, yeah, remains to be seen. But that uh, they, they had Jack Howarth come on and play some minutes last week. And he's on the extended bench in 19 jersey. So is Nelson in the 22. So we might be getting closer to a comeback. Uh, that bench is Christian Welts, Tepai Maroa, Alec McDonald there with Tyron Wissart. So yeah, I definitely think they could use a little bit of punch from Nelson and taking one of either Tepai or Alec McDonald. No offense to them. Uh, Nelson deserves eventually to be back in this side for what he's done in the NRL. But uh, Harry Grant still you know, scoring really well. Happy with him uh, thus far. Blory and Katoa are the guys you want to look at in the back row. For the Broncos up against the Dolphins, guys, what you're looking at here is a, a small you know, lot of changes there. We do see Ben Takura come back off the team into the 19 jersey. They still can't get rid of uh, you know, Fletcher, Fletcher Baker. Some people thought he might be the one to make way, but he's now in the starting side. And you've got Tristan Saylor in the 17 jersey with Tyson Smoothie in the 14. So they're going double double utility there. And I suppose they, they think that Tristan Saylor's worth having in this 17 longer term, which is you know, good for him. And I think is uh, solid overall for, for the Broncos. When you know you're getting 80 out of Carrigan or close to it, I suppose you can do those things, can't you? With Jock Madden moving into the seven, while she's back is the big news there. And if you, someone that really enjoys you know, having Reese in your side, in your fantasy and supercoach teams, there's definitely uh, no reason why you shouldn't go for him again. They have a much better run than they did at the beginning of the year. And he was scoring really well there. So I definitely think over the next couple of months, he can do some great things there for sure. I move over to the Dolphins. And again, we still don't see any news of Connolly Lamuelu which is, um, yeah, was expected. It looks, sounds like he's going to be out for a while. Bostock's still there. Avrilo and Tessie New is back with Herbie Farnworth being out of this side. Any other changes? Flegler has been named, which is good news for him. And uh, yeah, they lost obviously Herbie. He's going to be out for sort of a month. And, and Flegler sounds like it might just be a pain management issue at this stage, but we will try and find out a little bit more from the Fizz, um, given he's a, he's a Finns fan as well, so... That'll be cool. Outside of that, not too much else changes. Milford is on the bench there. Um, yeah, which will be cool for him. And, and Isaac Katoa doing really well. You and Aiken, you could take the risk on him or Dylan Lucas. It could be like another three weeks. It could be five weeks. It could be you know, for Aiken. It could be you know two or three for for Knights. We're not sure with with um, that of Dylan Lucas. So it's a risk that uh, might be worth taking. It might not be at the same time. For the Waz, you do see a exact same side that's been named Jacob Laban in 17 jersey again Tento Picky in 20 good to see he's back you know fit and available they've just named Chanel Harris Savita straight up in the 14 so it looks like they're happy with where he's at on that one with no Freddie Lussick in sight uh, hopefully Freddie's okay but um Tamari Martin did really good Chans I saw he's already on the you know couple of percent of people have traded Chans in he did great for us last year and he looked you know back to some of his best form in his first game back which is in- incredible Oh, the interesting news here for the Manly boys is Ben Trebojevic has been named in center. There you go. Just for the one week, potentially. But if Corey Waddell really, really um, you know, shows out, um, then he could keep that spot for sure. So at least Ben's still playing, but it's not uh, not ideal. He did score probably better in center last week, and it means he gets 80, mi- 80 minutes. I suppose that's something. But he could get um, could get torched by the, by the Wars in this one for sure with their lovely outside backs. So... That's an interesting one. What else is interesting is I did the hot takes video in the preseason and I did say that I thought Corey Waddell would um, would be starting from round one and getting big minutes. And uh, it took until round round six, I suppose, for him to get that spot. I didn't think that Ben Chaboyevich was going to take it. I just thought he was ahead of Schuster. So he definitely is on that front. But um, he had Burbo ahead of him. But yeah, took till round six and here he is. Turbo, a great purchase. Fantasy super coach both ways. Awesome. Waddell, a bit too much of a risk to take on him, and he's fairly expensive at that as well. So DC, another one that a few people are looking to target now. He's going to be goal-kicking this week. He won't longer term, but in this type of game, can he be a 50, 60, 70 type of scorer, or you know, will he come back down to earth a little bit? Will the Warriors do really well and, and potentially beat Manly? Like, was that just a... you know? flash in the pan type of win for them or is that going to be a little bit more consistent like it is for the Waz at the moment with the consistency they've shown over the last few weeks let's go to the Eels up against the Cowboys and well what we thought 
well, what we were worried about has has come and it's happened. And that's uh, Dejan Arce, who's actually been playing fullback in Cup, has been thrusted into this six jersey. So congratulations to him. It's uh, obviously frustrating for that of, of Blaise Talangi, missing a bunch of tackles. This is the worry with, with losing so drastically is that changes are made. And in this case, it was. And that's Blaise Talangi, our trade-in of the week has been dropped. So that is super frustrating. And look, you, you can hold him. I understand selling him as well. I'm still holding Brendan P. Kura and he's actually nowhere to be nowhere to be seen either, is he? We just spoke about the um, the Broncos just before and we don't see him at all, um, even close to the 22 at the moment, that of P. Kura. So he might, maybe it was Cinder's most or something because that's three weeks now. They did say four weeks, but he's not even, um, he wasn't even at training this morning apparently. So yeah, that's not good. So yeah, Blaze, not a nice one. The Eels need a massive comeback here at home at their home stadium at Combank. Hopefully it's a bounce back for guys like Clint Gutherson. If you're holding Brown, happy days. Um, and Lussick, we don't see um, Brennan Hands on the bench. He's not even in the 22. Um, Mike Sivo has been dropped as well. So they've just decided to go with Morgan Harper returning back to the centers. Bailey Simonson going to the wing. So yeah, tough luck for Micah after scoring a couple of tries. Not good at all. Uh, Lussick, a clear hold, guys, similar to that with Lane. And, and we do see Bryce Cartwright named in the starting jersey. I wonder if he actually keeps it or I think if he does, Ryan Madison will go into the start and you'll see Wittemu, Greg, likely go back onto that bench. Very unlikely. I think they see Talangi move onto the bench. But yeah, tough tough luck for the young fella. Had a really good game in the centers. Gets one game in six and then gets punted. So <laughs> BA... Can, can we ever trust BA? Not really. Um, he did say he wanted Lussick for 80, I suppose, and he kind of got that or close to it for the most part. Um, he wants one. I suppose he wants his players to play well as well, which hasn't happened uh, in the last couple of weeks. So that's that. For the Cows, what you see here is cracking scores out of Robson. Obviously, he's always a, a really good guy to have in your side. It looks like this year he's taken a step up and, and really dominating. For Ruben Cotter, he's a hold guy. He's not a buy at this point. Hold him for a good while now. That a great score, 56 on the weekend. You've got Val Holmes, absolutely killing it. Tom Chester, a little bit of an awkward price as a buy-in, but it is, it is his spot now, and I doubt that he will be losing it. So if you want someone to lock in uh, in that center position, you know he's going to work hard. I can't wait to watch him play. Um, yeah, so condolences to, to Laybutt. Absolutely loved him loved him, and loved him as a player. Um, but we're going to put our faith in, in Chester now, and if you do go for him, just be aware that in at center, how much work he gets on that right-hand side compared to the left-hand side is, is a little bit limited, but he'll still you know, get involved in a lot of a lot of good efforts and, and do good things. All right, for the Bunnings, what have they changed here? They've kept Dean Hawkins in there. <laughs> this is actually, oh my God, this is wild. So, Havili to start with, he's one, he was their best player a few weeks ago, then gets dropped the next week. Davi Mwale... Plays really good, like in one of the games, and then next week gets dropped, and then plays um, plays in cup, and he went something like two hundred and seventy meters or something, scored a try, played seventy minutes. So he's obviously got some talent, and the re- any reason why he hasn't been in this squad this whole time is is beyond me. Talis Duncan in the twenty one as well. I can understand like Kepi being down there as well, being dropped, and and there's obviously some some big changes happening here with um with their bench really, and then Damian Cook has been dropped. Damien Cook being dropped is absolutely wild to me, um, given he's been one of their better players, to be honest with you. And I don't see what good this does at the moment to drop Damien Cook. When, you, when you've got a, a large last-ditch effort to you know to look after yourself and, and your job, JD, I'm not sure if that is the best play. But um, yeah, we'll find out. Pete Marmers Ellis gets a, gets a chance to show his stuff. Which is excited for him. It's it's obviously come off the back of some really tough circumstances where where this is at right now. But yeah, good on him for getting that opportunity. I hope he takes it with both hands, and I think he will. Same to that with Jai Gray, a very impressive young player. Uh, we saw in the trials he looked electric, and he's been crushing it in cup as well. So again, thrust into a, a really tough situation. I hope he can come out okay. Obviously at home against the uh, against the Sharkies there. Outside of that, Tyrone Munro is back on the wing as well. When you're looking at this Rabbitohs team, guys, it's very hard to trust any of it because we can see that even Damien Cook can be dropped and you know, all these forwards on the merry-go-round, you know, Tunkin and the like there. You've got um, 
you know, Jai Gray, I think is probably the safest out of all these guys. Tyron Munro could be, you know, dropped to the, the blink of a, in the blink of an eye as well. And uh, we definitely need to watch a lot of these guys considering they've got to buy next week in round seven. Do still expect some decent minutes for, for Cam Murray. It would probably help if Cook was actually on the bench because, you know, Pete and, and Cook would split some time. But um, yeah, outside of that, it's a very worrying sign. When we're looking at the other side, the Sharkies, we probably need three or four trades this week. Would be good. Kale Iro has actually been named in the centers this week. So that is super helpful to anyone who started with him, those that um, decide to start with a non-player. It has worked out. You had a good week out of him a few weeks ago. And then you get him again this week. And I wonder if this is actually going to be long-term. They've got uh, Sifat Talakai, who's actually having a really, really good start to the season. They've got him on the interchange bench. So I wonder if that's just for, you know, coverage across, you know, he's the perfect coverage guy, playing him through the centers, the outside backs, obviously into the, the back row. I do also have Billy, Billy Burns who can cover the back row, obviously. But um, yeah, it's a really, really interesting type of decision here. And I think that helps... It does help Cam McInnes as well. I think he'll be able to play some bigger minutes again, but they do have a few of their forwards back with Hazleton coming into the starting side. Kale Iro, I definitely think could be a good pick. He's obviously got the talent for it. You know, his ability to score tries, break tackles uh, is really, really cool. And against the Bunnies this week, I do think that this is a week where the Sharks can put on a score. At least the Bunnies will be fairly leaky, you'd imagine. And, you know, hopefully they can play well and be in it. They don't even have Cook. They don't have Luttrell. It's a, it's a tough one when you're playing Dean Hawkins and a lot of it's relying here on on Cody Walker and Jack White and, and Cam Murray with Keon kind of being there, doing his thing. I think the Sharks can win this one pretty well and, and Iroh could be a good target for you. You get Nickera back. He's still at 650 odds, so it's a bit of an awkward one. He's on the slide still with his price um, and hasn't scored well, missing a lot of tackles across the first two games. So I do find it really tough to even suggest him as a buy this week. He could be, but I do think it's worth waiting a couple of weeks. There's every chance so he comes out and gets a 60, 70, or 80 with a try or two uh, against you know against this defensive out, outfit. He is up against Host on the right-hand side rather than being up against Colin Matungi for T. Wilton on the other side there. So, yeah, plenty of interesting things happening in these two teams. That's for sure. But Nico Hines, a clear best target, best captaincy option for this week. If you can somehow get him into your side, then that would be awesome. I'm going to find it a little bit difficult now with the, um, the situation that I think we found ourselves in. But let's move to the Tigers now. And their outside backs stay exactly the same with Jaden Sullivan at six again. Stefano is a, a very interesting mid to higher range buy now because he's been really, really good playing big minutes. And I don't expect that to change at all here. We do see Bateman out of this one with his concussion. Alex Safarth actually moving into the second row position. And we know that he can plug that hole and and do really well playing some decent minutes. What they do see there is Asu Kapoa moving on to the interchange bench and you should expect him to play some minutes for Alex Safarth and then be a good amount of cover for their outside backs as well, which is a pretty solid situation. They do have Justin Matamua coming onto the interchange bench as well. So don't fall for that at the moment just because he won't be able to play enough minutes for your side. Happy Coruscant, he's named again. I wonder if he'll kick. And I think that you can still set up some tries and yeah, make good tackles and do good things in this game. So give him a watch this week and, and decide from there. For the Dragon side of, of things, you do have Ty- Tyrell Sloan still named at fullback. He did switch in game last week. So I wonder how that's going to go. And, and good to see Jack Bird named. It means that even if he does miss this game, it sounds like he will be okay longer term. Really good game from Francis Molo last week. So if you're looking at him, I was having a look in a further, you know, look into his stats and, it's uh yeah, there's definitely some promise for him to be a bigger minute guy. Like they've got him in the start when you've got Jack DeBellin and Blake Laurie coming off the bench now. Looks like he's trusting Francis for for more minutes and yeah, you know, for more output. Yeah, you know, he had one of those games with a sin bin so far. So I do think he'll be somewhere between a 30 odd up to somewhere in the fifties. So if you want to take that plunge just under five hundred K, I won't push you away from it, but I'm not uh, advocating for it. Harm Sele into that starting side as well. So they are looking for some changes and some improvements in this Dragon side and good to see Harm back into that side. Outside of that, there's not really anyone you want to look at. Luchi Leilua, he you know, played good minutes on the weekend, scored really well. Can he continue to do that and help you guys out? If you do decide to select him, it's definitely you know a chance. But again, I wouldn't bank on him going 50 plus each and every week. And let's move on to the next one. The Raiders up against the Titans. Ah, and it looks like my boy Rappin is out as well. So that's a tough one at that. 
We just see Schiller keeping his spot on the wing. So Chevy straight into the fullback spot. I wonder how that's going to work with with Albert Hopawade over the next few weeks. If, if you are jumping on James Schiller, just be aware that you do have Hopawade uh, a high chance of, of coming in and taking his spot. If he comes out and plays really well, Schiller, I can see him continuing to hold that position and do good things. But you know, a big shout out to, to Chevy Stewart and there will, will be a few people out there to do select Chevy. The other thing as well, depending on how long, we'll find out soon, how long that uh, Rappen is out for, there's a good chance that he, if Chevy plays pretty well, Raps will come straight back onto the wing and that will likely be for Schiller in this one. So it could be a little bit of a short-term play if you go for James. That's the big worry with him. Xavier Savage, a couple of good games as well. I wouldn't go and chase him, but good to see he's still named along with Ethan Strange and Jamal Fogarty. Levi Starling, same setup there. You've got Mariotta, Mooney, and Salo on the on the bench, which is sweet. Simi Sasangi moves to the 19 jersey. And yeah, their props are uh, props and uh, edges are the same, except for Hosking returning. So Mariotta goes to the bench. And Morgan Smithy is the great man in 13. Thank God I got a good score out of him in Supercoach after trading him out in fantasy, that's for sure. Um, yeah, so that's Raiders. Really not too much to talk about outside of the um, the Chevy Stewart situation with Rapana. So I'll have to trade Chev. We then go to the Titan side of things, and, and you've obviously got Jaden Campbell there at the fullback slot, and, and hopefully the Titans can play a little bit better there. And uh, yeah, Jaden Campbell can continue to, to do good things like he did on the weekend, which is very, very helpful that he picked up that try and, and obviously the you know the defensive stats as well. Harley Smith Shields keeps his spot over Khan Pereira, who's still named in the 22. Brimson still at center. Foran looks like he'll be back, which is good news. Fafita goes into the second row slot. And where is Cleese? He's still lock. So, wow. Yeah, they really don't want Aaron Clark at lock, do they? So they've just named Fafita to start. Fermore uh, in the second row with him and then Cleese Hart at lock in that position. So, yeah, very interesting how that's played out. And if you do own Cleese, it's, uh, yeah, it's great news. And I think you just keep holding and, and continue to play him. He's a he's a good scorer at the moment. So when you've got Clark, Isaac Liu obviously back in the interchange, like Cleese could move back to the bench, every chance of that. And then Pahulu, Getting that spot back, uh, getting that spot as well. Looks like he's kind of locked himself down, uh, you know, a decent spot in this bench, um, and just needs some more minutes. I wonder if he will get it with Isaac Liu back. We'll, we will find out this week coming up. Oh, that's it. There you go. All of them done. Sunday afternoon, 4 p.m. Does that mean we got Sunday? Oh, we're back. 2 p.m. and 4 p.m. on Sundays. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And eight. Awesome. Yeah, there you go. Got them all done. Team list for the week, guys. Uh, if you have any further questions, jump jump into the um, you know the YouTube comments. I'll try to get back to as many of you guys as we can. But obviously, over the next few days, we'll get into all of our buy, hold, sell videos and and get uh, yeah all of that done. Plenty of fun across the week, as always. There's a lot of good cheapies that have popped up, and I wonder how many of the top guns that we can fit along with these cheapies. So thanks for being here, guys. I hope you have a cracking week.